What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm excited to bring this video to you because it's a tip that has hugely helped me with my color grading within DaVinci Resolve. And that is how to create non-destructive qualifications within your node trees within the color page. This is really important because when you create a color grade, especially if you're working with a director or a producer or DP that want to have input into what you are doing within the color page, you need to set up your node structure in a way that is non-destructive and it allows you to jump in and adjust any aspect of the image without breaking your qualifications that you've worked so hard to finesse and get perfect. What do I mean by this? Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve right now and have a look. This is the sample shot that we'll be using today and it's simply just a quick shot of this man lifting up this beehive and dropping it on a truck. I've already gone ahead and created some noise reduction added a balance node, added a color space transform, and then given it a base color grade, which is essentially two nodes in parallel. And that is my look adjustment. If I disable that, you can see, and then the hue versus, which has just slightly adjusted the density of a lot of these colors and shifted the hue slightly. So if I remove the hue versus and look, you can see this is the base grade, and then this is the base look and then film convert on the end just to add a bit of grain. I'm gonna remove film convert for this tutorial um, and then also hue versus and look, we can remove that and you can see what the color space transform is doing if I add that and then the balance. So the balance and the color space transform is essentially giving us our base grade and then the hue versus and look and the film convert is giving us our color grade on top of the base grade. Okay, so for the purpose of this demonstration, we are going to presume that we've presented this to the client and then the client has come back and asked us to adjust the hue of the box because he wants the hue of the box to be blue instead of teal. So what a lot of people would do is simply come up here and underneath the look, they'd create a parallel adjustment and then within this parallel node, you'd go to your qualifications and start selecting the color that you want to adjust. So I'm gonna select this um, tealy color here, click the eyedropper with the plus in the shadows and then drag that through into the highlights just to finesse that selection. Just make sure that all those little spots are being selected. I'm just gonna play through that adjustment to see if there's much noise. It's actually looking pretty good, but I'm just going to clean the white, clean the black, and then just give it a touch of denoise. I'm noticing under the box here that selection is a little bit um, spotty or artifacty, so I'm pretty sure that's coming from the luminance. I'm gonna soften that luminance and just pull that up. Great, so we've got a selection here and now we've got the selection. The easiest way to adjust the color is to simply move the offset and we're going to move that teal into the blue that we want. If we disable this, we've got the teal of the box and now the blue. Great, we've solved that problem as a colorist. Our job is done. We send it back to the client. And then the client comes back and says, hey, we actually really want to adjust the balance of this image. It's just sitting in the wrong spot and we want to adjust the contrast curve. So now we have an issue as a colorist because we haven't set up this in a non-destructive way. If we go back to our balance, and if we hit option P, I'm going to just create a parallel balance adjustment so I can A, B these adjustments. And in here, I want to add more contrast and I'm gonna reduce the gain down and increase my gamma. And let's say that is exactly what the director or the DP wanted. So if I remove this, you can see that's the additional adjustment that has been given. Now the issue with that is it's completely destroyed my key. In this case, it hasn't adjusted the key too much, but you can see if you pay attention to this shadow area in here, and I disable that extra adjustment that we did, you can see here in the initial selection that we did, the shadow area is nice and clean. But now that we've added an adjustment to our base grade, this shadow area now has a lot of artifacts in it. And that is because we've set up our selection downstream from our base grade or our balance. And anytime we add changes now upstream, it is gonna destroy these keys that are downstream from all of those adjustments. 
So a simple solution would be to disable the adjustment here and a lot of people would go up downstream from all of your color grade and you would do something called a global adjustment and you would do the same adjustment there. So remove the gain or decrease the gain, increase contrast. And let's say that is the adjustment that needed to take place. But what it starts doing is creating these sort of convoluted node trees where you've actually got a lot of your base correction now in your global adjustment because it wasn't set up properly where it should have been in the balance node. And so you've got contrast added here in the balance. You've got contrast in the color space transform. And then you've got contrast in your global adjustment. And you don't really want to be doing such fundamental changes to your image, such as a big contrast change in something like a global adjustment downstream. For me, that's confusing. And I want to keep my contrast adjustments where it should be in the balance adjustment down here upstream from all of my color grade. Okay, so having said all that, what do we do? What's the solution to fix this problem? Let's go ahead and remove that global adjustment and remove this balance node here. This is where our primary adjustment should be in terms of shifting the colors as part of that look adjustment, but we want to be sourcing that alpha information for that adjustment somewhere else. So here it is, here's the tip. What you wanna do is right click over here, add a corrector node, and then pull the chroma information from your input into this corrector. Now what we're doing is essentially creating like a parallel node structure, but the thing with this parallel node here is that it's not actually going to finish the color information and feed it back in to the signal chain. It's just gonna sit here independent of what's going on up here. And if we hit Shift H, we can see what's happening in this node. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create a contrast curve myself by increasing the contrast, which is down here, decreasing the pivot, or increasing the pivot rather, adding saturation, a little bit more contrast, and I'm actually with my offset down here, I'm going to pull a little bit of blue out of the image or increase the orange. So disabled and enabled. This is what this adjustment here is doing. I'm gonna call this second balance. And this is a balance for my keying or qualifying information. So I can go ahead and create the balance in any way that best serves the qualification that I want. For example, if I'm qualifying the skin, this balance is probably a little hot for the skin, so I could bring down the highlights and create a white balance that has maximum color separation for the skin. In this case, I'm trying to select the box here. I don't wanna select the straps, I just wanna select the box. Therefore, I'm creating a balance which is contrast and saturation, which is perfect for this box qualification. Now I can create a second node, option S, this is just a standard corrector node, and now in this node, I'm going to go ahead and create my qualification. So just with the eyedropper tool, I'm selecting the areas I want and Shift H will bring the full preview back. What I also want is to add the plus eyedropper and click in the shadow area here because I want all of that information. And as I play through, you can then just go ahead and continue to select the areas that you wanna qualify. just to make sure that you're getting a really nice strong key with all of these colors that you want. So you can go ahead and adjust and finesse this mask. I'm not gonna to dive too much into this for this video, but essentially now I have a really strong qualification which is sitting independently from all of my base corrections and all of my color grades. Now the magic happens when you just grab this blue dot here this is the alpha information, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this corrector here and just remove this mask. And I'm going to feed the alpha information from this selection down here into this corrector. What this has done is taken the alpha information that I've created from this selection and fed that selection into this corrector node here within my color grade. And you can see here that that selection from this node has transferred over into this correction. Just to remind us what this correction is doing, if I remove it, the boxes were initially teal. 
And now with the selection of those boxes, with the adjustment, it's moved it into more of that blue world. If I play this through, the selection is great, it looks good, it's robust, and it's not breaking. So let's go back to that initial scenario. The DP or director comes in and says, hey, can we change the contrast of this image? Now that we've set up our selection like this, that is absolutely no problem whatsoever. I can go to my balance node and do whatever I want to the contrast of this image. I can give it like a completely different look can completely blow out certain areas. I can even change the color cast of this image. You can see that's fundamentally changed the makeup or the balance of this image. But what's really important about this technique is you can see that this selection here, if I disable this, it's completely intact because I'm sourcing the alpha from this second balance down here. This selection stays intact because it's sourcing its alpha information from an independent source. If I play this back, you can see that this adjustment here, no matter where I am in the frame, is just giving a really beautiful selection to those boxes. Now this technique, if you hear it described elsewhere, may be called upstream downstream keying. And essentially upstream is from our source. So this is creating an upstream key that we're feeding into downstream nodes. So these nodes here are downstream from our balance correction. Our balance is upstream from our color grade. If you create selections downstream, so towards the end of your node structure, very often they will be influenced by all of the adjustments upstream from that corrector. And so it's important just to manage your selections in a way that allow you to go ahead and adjust any of the fundamental building blocks of your grade without the fear that you're gonna blow out all of your selections. So there you have it, that's the technique. This technique could go one step further if you wanted to and you just simply create a parallel node here and you create a second selection. So this selection could be, for example, just selecting the skin tones. You could then go ahead and create another selection which would be just selecting the purples or the pinks and you could go from there. Simply after that, you grab the alpha channel of that selection and drag it downstream into the corrector that you want it to affect. This technique is also super powerful when it comes to keying out green screen footage and using a whole lot of independent masked selections to key out the green. And if you wanna see this technique in action, check out this video which explains it in a little bit more detail. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking and dropping a comment in the comment box below if you have any questions. Peace out.